Welcome to another episode of the Jotocast, your home for Star Wars gaming. This time, we've got something a little special. We are going to dive right into a Jotocast curated gift guide for your all of your weird nerds in your life, I guess. <laughs> Um, like day or whatever holiday you're celebrating yeah so we're gonna skip the what you've been playing and because there's a tiny chance that whoever's watching or listening to this might not care about star wars games but there's someone in their life who does we're gonna try and keep this on the briefer side so we don't lose them right <laughs> we'll see <laughs> so we've made a list and we've uh organized things into we checked it twice category i didn't <laughs> that's that's uh we're not competent enough to have done that actually gonna find out uh, who's light side or dark side maybe no anyway <laughs> relevant to the forces of capitalism okay well let's start with games for kids you got some children in your life and you want them to go over there and play a game and stop bothering you or play a game with them I threw together a list of games I think are good for kids. I guess I've played very few of these with actual children, but I've played them and I think they're still good <laughs> for adults. <laughs> um, I did just play Snack Time. It's called Star Wars Snack Time Game. Um, I did not actually check the availability of, I, of a lot of these. Let me. That's the one where you like catapult the frogs into Baby Yoda's mouth. Or... Yes. Okay. It's got that fun, like goofy kinetic element, which I think kids would probably really get into, like launching and it's got frogs. These gooey frogs. Um, it's just like a cardboard Grogu with a big hole in the mouth, and each person has a little catapult, and you catapult frogs through. I mean, it's, it's got to be better for Amazon. your kid than one of those games where you like make a dog poop or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it's fun too. Um. Looks like it's $17.99 on Amazon right now. I know for a fact I managed to get a copy for five bucks one time. Who knows? Ages four plus. Yeah, I could see a real little kid. They might have trouble aiming, but they would have fun trying to, right? So it's mm -hmm. not complicated or anything. Okay, here's one that I recommend that's not available on Amazon. We've got uh, Loop and Chewy, which has apparently finally sort of gone out of print. Oh man! Also, ages four plus. It's a reskin of a classic game called Loop and Louie, which is, must also be out of print because it's that game is shown forty three bucks on Amazon, and the new one, which is not called Loop and Bluey, but Bluey Keepy Uppy Game, also seems to be sold out or not available on Amazon. Hmm. Anyway, if you can find Loop and Chewy for twenty bucks or less, pick that up because another very fun game for kids that. Is also fun for adults. Um, it's just a motorized boom arm with the falcon on it that spins around and tries to tip over your chips that are in a ramp, and you hit a little paddle to keep him up in the air to avoid hitting your chips. And it's uh, the way it's weighted and balanced just makes him kind of go all over the place. Uh, it's cool. Fast-paced, very few rules. I think it's a really good one for probably any kids especially kids against each other because they'll play at each other's level too but i think a kid could play against an adult easy too so like all of these games uh like the next one so snack time loop and chewy and spot it which there is a mandalorian version of spot it spot it very classic kids game another game that is fun for adults but so far those three games are games that i feel like you need to either only play with adults or only play with kids because you're going to crush kids at these games. <laughs> yeah, like, like like we play Spot It. We play Spot It with our, you know, like my a kid when he was younger. And yeah, you definitely would have to like hold back. While he, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, otherwise just stop all over the poor kid every time. Yeah, Spot It's fun. There is a Mandalorian version. I don't think there's any other Star Wars versions, but the Mandalorian version is interesting because there's things you have to like reference like what is that oh that's a tracking fob okay uh so that's the one next. with the cards and you're trying to recognize the little symbols basically yeah basically you have to match between the the ca card that's out and a card in your 
that you have. And, the, and then grab it faster, basically. Yep. Yeah. There's 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 like ten different little mini games that use those cards. There's different ways to play it, but there's yeah, it's just each card has exactly one picture in common with every other card. So they're just games of trying to be the first one to figure out which picture multiple cards have in common. Another one that I think is actually a surprisingly solid game that is, you know, intended for children is called Something Wild. It's from Funko Games. There are loads of different uh, properties, you know, like Disney characters and Marvel characters, but there are Star Wars ones. Grogu, Vader, and Boba Fett each have a version of the game. And it's sort of a, feels like a classic kind of kids card game with colored cards each of all the cards have different numbers which correspond to different characters so it's kind of fun to see the characters you like and it's you're trying to make um either like one like sequential groups or colored groups and then what makes it a little more interesting is there are special powers that you can claim by claiming the character pieces and you can combine them so you can have, instead of just everyone's trying to pass around Grogu, you could have Boba Fett and Darth Vader on the table as well, and everyone's, you know, there's multiple powers in play. It's it's actually um, a surprisingly solid little game that gets a little bit more interesting and complex the more copies of it you mix together, because they're all compatible, even the non-Star Wars ones. Oh, that's so interesting. I think it's uh, pretty good. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense too, because then you have kind of expansion room if someone likes it. You can get them more and yeah. And the last one, I would say probably the least. This one might take a little bit more consideration if you're like, I need to get a kid a game. Star Wars Rivals. The core game is 20 bucks, but it's not super playable with just the core. You need to get a couple boosters, which are $5 each because it is a randomized game outside of the core box. The boosters are randomized. Um, I think it's actually a pretty decent little game and it's ages seven and up, but it's, you know, be, being a randomized booster game, there's a little bit more upfront with, well, do you pick up a couple boosters? Are you going to get this kid addicted to that booster lifestyle? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it, so is that the one with the little sort of it's another game from figure, Funko games, little figure guys? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The ones that are kind of ugly, except for, unless they're wearing a helmet. <laughs> I could see kids having fun collecting those little, they're not even really action figures, but yeah, little yeah, it, guys. It is, the the figures are fun and it, it would be, you know, you go to Walmart or whatever and you go, Oh, there's one. Let me buy another one, mom. And then, you know, before you know it, you spent 40 bucks on this game that you thought was <laughs> 20 bucks, but something wild rivals snack time, loop and chewy and spotted are our Jodo cast recommendation for star Wars games for kids. And or if younglings, people you want to see <laughs> see any of these games played. Do we have any? We've got some of these on our YouTube channel, right? Um, Most of these, I all of these. I think all the games I've mentioned have gameplay videos on our YouTube channel. Like even Rivals, Rivals is there's a live stream recording of it, um, so that I might be harder to find, but it's on there somewhere. Bethany and I played Rivals. I do. Have, I did record a gameplay of Rivals, but I haven't edited it and put it up yet but all of those games do have gameplay videos on our youtube channel if you want to take a look i would say don't watch them with your kids because our <laughs> youtube channel is not kid friendly even if the games are uh so keep that in mind but yeah it can be a good way to see what the gameplay is like and see what it looks like it's not like rated r stuff <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember which videos i censor swears and which ones i don't yeah. remember what jokes we're making but yeah definitely um and they're all pretty short quick videos because these are all short quick games so and that that might give you a good idea if you think you will have fun with it or if you you know want to play it with the kid you're buying it for what's kurt kurt what's next on our uh list we're moving up into more games, advanced categories yeah games for families so these are ones you can, all about family. You can play uh, with your kids instead of like sending them off, right? So, did you mean to have something wild in both categories here when you were writing the list, or is that a uh, Joe? I think that's intentional. 
<laughs> something wild is a good family game. The, I think I think something we should point out too, in addition to the price and the age ratings of these games, is probably the player count. Mm-hmm. At least now that we're updating the games for families, uh, mm-hmm. something wild I think is just four plus. I mean four max. Mm-hmm. So, is it you know what that, a different topic for a different video? I re- there's most of the Star Wars games are two players, which feels weird. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a lot of head to head, which makes the family category a little harder. Yeah. But topic for a, for a different video for yeah. me to digest and see what that means. <laughs> but anyways, take 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 us through our recommendations for family games. Yeah, so the first one we got on here is Star Wars Villainous, which I think you can describe how the gameplay works better than me. But that one is is it really even competitive or is it more co op? It's competitive. Sort of a... I've only played it once, and I've been meaning to play it again because I had a lot of fun the first time I played it. Star Wars Villainous. You have like with... the giant Darth Vader in the middle, right? No, you no. are thinking of Dark Side Rising, which yes. is cooperative, okay, which is not on this list because it's not available in North America and might even be out of print outside of North America. Villainous is spawned off of the series of games called just Disney Villainous. There's also Marvel Villainous, and this. Um, I'm not sure how compatible different boxes are. You probably have to just stick with one. There is an expansion mm-hmm. for Star Wars Villainous that adds Boba Fett and Cad Bane. The players you play as out of the box are Ventress. I think it's Ventress, Grievous, Kylo, Vader, and Dooku? I forget. It's... Uh, you kind of are doing your own thing, um, and each character has their own objective that is very thematically appropriate. I believe Grievous is trying to just collect X number of lightsabers, and Ventress has her own little inner journey to go through and so forth. And you are sort of doing your own thing and then sending the hero characters who come up in the decks at the other players to mess with them. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. which is sort of the kind of the thing about that game. So um, I thought it was very fun, clever, and rather simple. Um, so you're kind of playing of semi on artwork. your own, but you're interacting a bit still and enjoying playing a Star Wars bad guy. Yeah. And and yeah. then, like Joe said, it also gives you the option of once you learn this game, it's pretty easy to transfer over to the standard Disney or the Marvel version um, as well to kind of expand the gameplay options and play with some different characters too if you like the game yeah yeah so that... parent, this is only 25 bucks it's on sale oh i could have sworn that was like a 40 dollar box it's it's 40 dollars originally i honestly see it on sale all over the place um your local like goodwill store probably has a palette of them to be honest i've seen them <laughs> I've seen them at lots of like Goodwill type places too. Um, that's where I got my copy for five bucks. <laughs> wow, that'd be a great deal. The uh, age range is listed as ten plus, so not like a little kids type game, like the uh, games for kids category. But with some of those older kids, it would be sounds like it'd be a good group activity. And it's two to four players, so you could play it one on one or with a. A small family, at least a non-big family. I don't think the expansion changes the player count; just gives you different options of characters. But could be wrong. Like I said, I haven't gotten this game on the table as much as I'd like to. Yeah, the that time would, I played it, I thought it was great. That would add good replay value too, which I think could be good for a family game. So you're not just getting bored playing the same thing over and over. So I think right. Good. And there are, I mean, just out of the box too, you have a maximum of four players, but there's five villains so it is going to be you know mixed up every time but yeah yeah i i I did put something wild in the games for families because it's i don't know it feels like a family game but we already talked about that one yeah i think because like those kind of rummy style card games are pretty classic family uh get together type things then the next one we have on the list is the clone wars uh what is this one (laughs) i forget (laughs) 
<laughs> I gave you the wrong category to walk through. This, this is, is the Star Wars pandemic. The pandemic. Oh, yeah, the right, pandemic right, right. System game. Yes. Which I think is a good family game because it is fully cooperative. Um, if you're playing with your kids, there's a good chance that kids these days will be familiar with all of the Clone Wars characters because you are, you have. I believe the player characters can be Obi Wan, Anakin, Ahsoka, Windu, Luminara. I think you can be Yoda also, can't you? Yoda, maybe Ayla Sakura. I forget. There's actually a surprising number of playable characters, and then you're playing against either Grievous, Ventress, uh, Prime Lord Maul, or Dooku, and it's. Based, it's built off the pandemic system, so rather than a disease spreading across the globe, it's battle droids spreading across the galaxy. Um, separatist troops or separatist and, sympathy, basically, yeah. Yeah, and the, the overall mechanics are pretty simple, and you can adjust the difficulty setting to make it easier or harder for everybody, and it's fully cooperative, so seems like a solid family game. 30 bucks. That's also that must be on sale now, too, then. Yeah, that doesn't sound I think bad that was a fifty dollar one MSRP. The age range is fourteen plus, so obviously for like older kids or kids who maybe have already gotten out of high school, not your little kids, but uh, you know, for families that like to get into those more complicated heavyweight board games together, I think that would be a lot of fun to do as a family. And it goes up I to mean, five. You players, could play it with which... you, yeah, up to five, and I think you could play it with younger kids as long as. You know, they're kind of walk some of right. them through it with some of them. Yeah. Right. You go, do you want to go over here? And they go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I think that's all for that one, right? So then the last one under games for families, I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah. I this and I added there. this to the list, but this is definitely out of print. Ages 12 and up two to eight players, though. This is the highest player count on our list today. And. It's just kind of a dumb little... So I haven't actually played this game, but I remember when it came out and some people were playing it at, like before Legion League. And it's just one of those dumb games where you just have a bunch of cards and it's sort of like a take that kind of game. I don't even remember what the goal is, but everyone just kind of has cards that screw each other over and they all have stupid like Star Wars dad jokes on them. <laughs> yeah. I know, nope. it's, it's a very strange game. I don't even know who made it. Even though it's technically out of print, I've seen it for sale at like, like used like like half price books and places yeah. like that. Yeah, before. it's gonna be That's used for sure. Bought my copy. Yeah, seems like maybe a game you get your dad who like, <laughs> you know, like if Leo was a guy who wasn't that into Star Wars but like was a Star Wars guy as a kid, that kind of dad. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Can I have some kind of you kind of have some Star Wars references, and you can play like a pretty overall pretty simple sounding game. It sounds like the way the cards work and stuff. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure there's a card with Admonic Bar on it that says it's a trap. Mm -hmm. Like put it down. You go, it's a trap, and everyone goes, I remember that from the movie. <laughs> so yeah, so it's not like one you can just pop on eBay or I mean on Amazon and buy, but you can probably find it on eBay fairly cheaply or like you said half yeah, price books something like that it's not likely to even though it's out of print it's not going to be very expensive nice leo games for gamers uh, as our resident gamer what should people <laughs> buy for the gamers in their life <laughs> we're a podcast about gaming and somehow i get stuck being the resident gamer <laughs> I feel maybe a little insulted i don't know I did um, um, omit games like X-Wing, Armada, Legion, and Shatterpoint from the list because that's not something you can just buy somebody willy-nilly. You have to like know that they already want that. Maybe X-Wing. Yeah. X-Wing might be the exception to that, but like yeah. yeah. Yeah, and also, or like, if they already are playing the game, I mean, then obviously the suggestion would be like, well, Buy them a unit they don't have that they need or want, but we don't know what that is. So, <laughs> yeah, they're kind of hard to buy someone out of the blue. They're not really as self-contained, and they're mm -hmm. kind of like very right. specific. 
Uh, but so so instead, what we put on the list, uh, one of the first things we put on was the uh, the Star Wars deck building game, um, which came out earlier this year. Um, right in March. Yep, back in March. Um, and it's a it's it's a fantastic game. It's uh um if you never played a deck builder game, there's sort of like a communal pool of cards that you can buy from um uh throughout the course of the game and uh as you buy cards you add them to your deck and so uh, sort of over the course of the game you build your deck as the the name of the game suggests and um if you have played deck builders before plays very similar to other ones it's it's very very reminiscent of star realms in fact um it's kind of star realms with a few extra um um, features like you can actually attack and destroy um, cards that are in the the center row for purchasing if you want to prevent your opponent from buying those cards um, and a few other things like that that um, kind of do help set it apart from other deck builders and uh, make it just a lot of fun to play um, and I don't think they've one hundred percent confirmed it, but um, or no, they. I think they have. They have mentioned Fantasy Flight has mentioned that they are uh, working on an expansion for the game. Um, so yeah, so there's at least one down the road, uh, possibly more. Um, if uh, Dominion has taught us anything, is that there's endless possibilities for deck builder expansions. <laughs> yeah. This one is a a 1v1 only, which isn't... Mm -hmm. Or I guess if you bought two, you could do 2v2, right? Yeah, yeah, there there is rules for for 2v2, technically, if you you bought two two sets. Um, But 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 basically, it's just a one-on-one, yeah. Yeah. Um, One player plays as the light side, one player plays as the dark side, as is the default in uh, Star Wars... And it's original trilogy setting at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for now, so who knows what expansions might bring into it? But uh, for now, yes, it's all original trilogy stuff. Um, and that's it's also it's a fairly cheap game. It's uh, usually on sale for about twenty bucks. Um, I think it's what MSRP forty bucks. Yeah, it's something it's a, like that. Right. But, but I mean, it's a small I, box. It's it's nice. It's not going to take up a lot of space on the shelf. It's easy to travel with if you need a little two-player game yeah. on the go. Yeah, I guess that should be mentioned is that uh, like the prices we're sort of quoting is what we're seeing on on sales on Amazon. Um, generally, if you go into a your like your local game store, the prices are going to be a little bit higher usually because they're selling at MSRP. That's a good point. Yeah, but we're all for supporting uh, your local game stores. So, well, next up on the games for gamers is the gameriest game on the whole list. I think Star uh, Wars yeah. rebellion, which funny side note, uh, just a few hours ago, I uploaded a YouTube short of a silly little thing I purchased, which was a rebellion, like promotional banner. It really is just like a, a flag that you'd like raise on a flagpole. Um, and one of the comments was because the title had hashtag board game in it. And let me redo this comment because I think it's stupid. I don't want to call out this person, but it says, I see board games is one of the tags. If I may ask, what game is it too? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's for, for Rebellion. It says on the thing, Star Wars Rebellion. It's, it's a poster just for the general concept of rebelling. Maybe he was uh, thinking yeah. of because there was, back in the 90s, there was a Star Wars Rebellion computer game. Which is sort of similar in concept to the way the board game is. Yeah, in fact, in the, 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 the board game very much feels like the spiritual successor to that computer game. I've played a lot of Rebellion recently. I think it's so good. If you've got a guy or a girl in your life who just loves those big old heavy super nerd it's board games. It's, games. Not the, it's not the biggest, heaviest board game around, yeah. but it's on that end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. It's big. It's one of those games that the first time you play it, it might take you five hours. Yeah, Once it's... you're more seasoned, it'll probably be three to four hour games. It's a, it's a, what I guess I'd say it's like a 4X style uh, 
but the, yeah the kind yeah. of the appeal of it is it's um it's empire versus rebellion but it's super asymmetrical where the empire player gets all the ships all the troopers all the stuff and the rebel player gets barely anything and the goal for the rebel player is to perform tasks and deeds that will inspire the galaxy to eventually like go okay fine we'll side with the empire <laughs> Whereas the Empire is simply trying to discover the location of the secret secret rebel base and destroy it. So this it's sort of a race against the clock for both players because the rebels gotta, you know, do stuff before the Empire finds their base. And it's it's just really cool. It's very um it's There's a really bunch fun. of There's a lot of really thematic, thematic mechanics, yeah. Because you're like yeah. sending out probe droids, you're trying to find the base, you're managing your build queue. Like, when is the super star destroyer going to finish building? And you're sending out your heroes on missions. You're trying to capture and turn Luke to the dark side and stuff. So, like, all that stuff comes up. And yeah, really last time I played, Mon Mothma got turned to the dark side, which <laughs> really sucked because then she would show up to like remove rebel loyalty and like instill imperial loyalty i'm like come on man what'd they do to you um it's it's very fun i would say without the expansion which um revamps and basically entirely overhauls the combat system it's like a it's not as good as it could be the the you oh i would say you almost need the expansion it's almost a necessary component of the game for how much better the combat is after you get the expansion than before. That being said, we had a lot of fun playing the game before the expansion came out. Yes. It's yeah. just, it's more like now that we have the expansion, it's hard to imagine going back to the way it was. So, right. yeah. So if you do get it, just it, the, the, the baseboard game, it's not like you're not going to have fun. Yeah, get it, get it for somebody, and then like mention, hey, I think there's an expansion for that, and let them buy the expansion. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> this is really a good. this is already a higher price point than uh, most of the games we've talked about uh -huh. already. So like, I think having the expansion as a follow up gift, you know, if they like it, is a really good option. Yeah, I think yeah. this is on sale on Amazon right now, about eighty eight bucks, but I think retail is more like about a hundred, if I remember mm -hmm. right. Yeah, um, it's a big box. Yeah. It's, I think, the biggest box Star Wars game besides Shatterpoint. I think it might have the exact same size box as Imperial Assault. Um, but Rebellion, fantastic game. So, oh, and the, you can do 2v2 that, with it, too, if you really well, want. Well, that's what I was going to ask. The Amazon listing listed it as, like, two to four players, but I was wondering how the four players... Does thing it really I put a strike through in our notes over the four because oh. it's... <laughs> not worth to see you can basically all it's it's one of those shoehorn technically it's four player kind of fantasy flight things where it's it's just 2v2 where each pl one player is the general and they get final say over ground stuff and the other one is the admiral and they get final say over space stuff and it just kind of slows the game down mm, yeah. makes all the decision making harder wishy-washier and i do not recommend playing with more than two players um a game you can play with more than two players is Outer Rim. Um, and uh, this has kind of been a favorite of ours, I think, ever since the game came out. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> um, in this game, you're going to take on the role of uh, some kind of a smuggler or bounty hunter type character out uh, in the Outer Rim. Uh, you're going to get a little character sheet and a ship. Um, you're going to fly from planet to planet, uh, performing various tasks and, you know, avoiding getting caught by Imperial patrols while doing it. <clears throat> you know, unless yeah, you're friendly with the Imperials, then you're fine. Yep. Yeah, you get, you have reputation with the Empire, the Huts, the Syndicate, and the Rebels, and depending on how they feel about you, that affects things, and everyone will have their own different personal goals and trying to buy cool ships i think this game is a lot of fun again the expansion i don't think this expansion is as necessary as rebellion's expansion true but it does add a lot especially in the way of player interaction because this game doesn't have as much player interaction outside of what the expansion adds um, yeah but it doesn't fair. it never really 
bothered me because you're still like trying to, you know, do your own thing faster than the other people because it's just a race to see who can be become the most famous or infamous. And I feel like what is happening on other people's turns is interesting and thematic en- enough that I find myself paying attention even if I don't really like need to, you know. Right, because every I love how Rebellion tells Star Wars stories, but it's always very similar. Like, okay, here's this search for the rebel base. Mm -hmm. And along the way, okay, this guy got thrown into a Sarlacc pit and the Death Star blew up this planet. And that's different every time. But overall, it's sort of the same thing. Just seeing how you can outfox each other. Without a rim, every game is such a different like you know each character has their own little story that plays out and you all have so much fun seeing that story play out the yeah characters you can recruit and stuff right or, like or, oh i'm playing as, like yeah like, i'm playing as, it's like i got i got greedo i recruited him as a crew member of my ship and then like the next turn uh, I picked up a bounty on Creo, so then I was all like, mm, "All right, kick him off my ship." <laughs> yeah, I, turned him I in. Think I, I was playing as Han, and I got the win by murdering Chewbacca, <laughs> who was on my ship. Like, hey, Chewie, come up here for a second. <laughs> and I think, yeah, Outer Rim has such a greater potential for fun little stories. I also think it's a better game for super star wars nerds not that like it's no good for people who aren't super star wars nerds but if you got the guy in your life who's just read everything and knows all the lore every card is just got all this flavor text and you're like oh it's that from that thing and he's like oh i'm playing that shit and that gun you know you play as you know dr afro she a lot of people don't know who dr afro is she's one of the main characters out of the core box there's so much like star wars nerd stuff in outer rim which is really uh, and it's another and, bit part of its appeal and it's not quite as crunchy of a board game as rebellion is you know yeah. like you said I yeah think out of everything on the list here rebellion is a thing that like you have to be into board games to really get into probably um i think outer rim is something you can sit down and play with just about anybody yeah, I, I have played Outer Rim with my mom and my cousin who are, you know, only play games as much as, you know, when they're around me and I go, I have another game, I'm going to make you play. And they, they they could hang, so it's not a complex or complicated game, even though it is a little bit more on the heavier side of board games, at least as far as the ones on this list. Yeah. And so it's uh, it goes up to four players at it works really well with four. I think even two players I've done, I think works pretty good and I think it does three support. Is the sweet spot. Yeah, I think so. Three is really good. It does support solo. Cause there's like these bot cards. Uh, it's not as good as playing with real people, but it is possible, you know? So it's an I option. believe the expansion improved on the solo play, but I've never tried it solo. So I, I don't know. Yeah. We did one time use the solo, cards to add a fourth ai player and that i think we did a video of that that was kind yeah of cool. that's another cool option too to pad out the players so it's it's kind of neat yeah um let's see our next on our list we've got imperial assault which has uh been a favorite of uh joe's for a long time for sure could fit in the family category barely i think it's it's somewhere the Imperial Soul ends up being somewhere between a minis game and a board game. Um, you're gonna have a, a map you build out of little little tiles. They're gonna have a grid on it. You're gonna move your guys around on the grid. And if you're playing the campaign mode, um, you're gonna have actual like objectives to complete on the map. If you're doing just like a skirmish mode, you're just your guys are fighting against your opponent's guys and you see who can kill who the first. Yeah, it's um there's actually four games in one. The main thing is the campaign mode, right? Which is story based. It has original characters, but it also has um familiar familiar characters like Vader or Han Solo or Leia. Um this game has a lot of expansions, but just the core box, which I think is about a hundred bucks 
has a full campaign in it with everything you need to play it. And it's the default way the campaign is played is one player plays as the Empire and then one to four players take on the roles of rebel heroes, um, which is uh, appealing to some people and a turnoff to other people who would prefer fully co-op, which yeah. I don't is like an option. I don't like cast. describing the Imperial player as like a player though. Like I always tell people it's think of it more like a role playing game and the Imperial player is like the GM or the DM, you know, that's in some ways, but I th- I've always viewed it more as a player big. because they always kick our butt whenever we do campaigns <laughs> and they're yeah. trying to win. It's, it's some kind of weird middle ground, which again, sometimes is a little jarring for people if you're expecting a role-playing game or expecting uh, a board game but it it is interesting you know it's very different from these other games where you're you kind of teaming up on one person as like a dungeon crawler because it is based on the descent board game that came before it kind of put on a star wars skin which was yeah because you have would... the maps are fairly little yeah it would be sort of kind of like gloomhaven if one person was controlling the monsters instead of a good guy C- kind of but it has that same like mission based setup right so if someone likes yeah. that type of game and it has a it's the campaign is like story there's story to read and understand like get to know your characters and the villains and stuff um like leo said there's a skirmish mode which is a totally different game mode that's just 1v1 and each map has its own set of objectives, so it's not just kill each other. There are objectives. Um, that was how I spent most of my time with this game back when it was in its heyday. Then there is an app for the game, which has a fully cooperative campaign, so the app will tell you where to place the enemies and what they're doing and stuff if you want to go fully co-op. And the app also has a fully co-op non-campaign i forget what it's called it's basically a horde mode yeah where you have your hero characters and it spawns more and more and more enemies and you see how long you can hold off to get the high score so technically i think imperial assault has four different game modes out of one box plus all the expansions i don't know if it's out of print or not it's not hard to find no it's not these print. they're still printing all this stuff okay yeah because they haven't been like making new stuff for it for a few years now but yeah they're still printing out the old stuff and it's, yeah uh, there's the, i mean the app just recently got an update in the app store but it was just like it wasn't any actual like new content they just it was mm. like a bug fix or something so they're still at least doing that um i don't know if i would really call the co-op with the app really a new game mode it's really the same as the campaign mode it's just the your tablet becomes the imperial player yeah, it's, there's it's some differences, different, but entirely there are different rules um, from the core game. There are different rules on how you heal your characters and different things like that. But it is just a wholly different vibe, where like fully cooperative versus four people versus one. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I've never played it with like your the imperial is more of a GM than an opponent kind of <laughs> mindset, where it's always been like more combative. Um, but I think of all of these games, this is the game that has the potential to like suck somebody in and make them want more and more of it. Yeah. Um, if they find a nice group to play through the campaigns with, because it's just a, it's a fun, it's a fun game and there's enough like luck plus strategy to have a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah, and our, so then our last game we got here for gamers is we were going to suggest uh, Star Wars Squadrons, which is our first thing that's not a tabletop game. This is video game. Um, you know, it's uh, you can get it on Xbox, PlayStation, or PC. Um, and uh, I think uh, right now looks like it's about forty bucks on Steam. Um, but I mean, just the other day it was on sale for like two bucks. I see it pretty regularly on sale for like five bucks, 10 bucks. Um, you can get it pretty cheap. Um, and one reason we're suggesting this game is just because 
I feel like this is the one that a lot of uh, video gamers who are also Star Wars fans may have actually uh, passed by. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, it's a shame if they did, because it is a really good game. Um, Yeah, it's it's great. Even just if you just play the campaign and be done with it, it's still great. Yeah, really good. Just dogfighting, space combat, nice little story to it. It's not a huge game compared to some other ones, but it's got a nice little story and it's, it's fun. There's still some people playing multiplayer too. So yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, you can have what up to, is it 12 players in a, I think it's 10. Been, I think it's five. It, I, I, it's been, yeah. it's been so long since I last played. I can't remember. It's five or six people in a team. It's five. We, we, we got to, and if, if the person you buy it for is a fan of Jota cast, they can join our discord and every once in a while we'll throw a group together to play. Cause we did that a few <laughs> weeks back and that was really fun. It was like um, four or five of us, maybe six. Do we get up to six? I don't remember. That was fun. Squadrons, great game. Um, if we want to throw in one other video game, I'm going to throw in a curveball. I'm going to say Yoda Stories. For, uh, games for families and games for kids, sort of same deal. Skywalker Saga, obviously. If you've got a oh, good point. kid who has not played the lego star wars skywalker saga that's perfect very good game and it's gonna last them forever because it's there's so much to do in that game but even wilder curveball would be disney infinity 3.0 the star wars starter pack which comes with anakin and ahsoka because that was a toys to life game if you remember that one, you had to get the little figure and put it on the RFID reader. Yeah, you still gotta find. You gotta nowadays. You gotta find the game, and then it's you hard to find, find the figures and stuff. So, yeah, it's hard to find the figures. Um, uh, it I mean, it's like a lot sixty of these, bucks on yeah. Amazon. But that game, if you can find the figures for a decent price, which might be hard because it's all out of print, uh, that game was actually surprisingly good and fun, and. If it had been entirely digital and not had the little toy model, maybe it would have kept going. And I don't know. That, that's why it died, because the toy model wasn't sustainable. But it was a good game. Yeah. A little sandbox to play around, build stuff. Our last category of holiday gift guides for Star Wars gamers is accessories. Because one of the things I like for Christmas is getting those things I wasn't going to buy myself, which when it comes to board games basically includes extra dice. So if you've got somebody who plays one of the miniatures games like Shatterpoint or Legion or X-Wing or Armada, especially if they're just getting into it, or they the Star might Wars role playing plays. game. The dice are finally coming yeah, back the, in stock. The Star Wars role playing game. Yeah. A lot of these games you like always need more dice than come in the core set. And it's usually a pretty cheap buy to just get a little pack of dice. Good stock, stocking stuffer. Uh, fancy tokens. All the if the, someone in your life is playing, you know, any of those big hobby lifestyle games like Legion, Shatterpoint, X Wing, Armada. See if they don't. If they're just still rocking the cardboard tokens, go get them some some acrylic tokens or metal tokens or wood Great tokens. Great place for a premium upgrade. Yeah, you can find just do a search for game name and tokens on on Etsy, and you can yeah, find mm-hmm. some stuff. Um, one I really want to shout out if you got an Armada player in your life, um, is uh so there's a uh, a guy on Etsy. His name's Admiral Tater, who makes <laughs> Armada uh, tokens and accessories. Uh, but he has uh, uh the little f- uh, token markers for the uh, squadrons. And they are just one of the best and most uh, convenient, like quality of life upgrades you can have when playing a game of Armada. I think so. Um, every Armada sh- player should have them. I think. <laughs> also, anybody wants to get me any for Christmas? <laughs> I really like buy the same token tokens. Bethany got me their Outer Rim tokens for Christmas last year they're they're just so nice it's so it just 
it makes a game so much more fun when the, you have those fancy tokens. Um, Curled Paw another, uh, is another one I really like. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's just like a million on Etsy. You can go search and just see like which look cool to you. Uh, right. Um, because yeah, a lot of time they're a little bit more on the expensive side. So some people usually, well, I want to spend that money on the game expansions. And so you can spend that money on those tokens that they weren't going to buy for themselves. And yeah, and even, even then, like really you said, there's, there's a range from just like pretty plain acrylic ones up to, I've seen, you know, like metal ones that have been like it painted with enamel paints and stuff to, to make them really fancy. And yeah, so, so yeah, so there's a whole range there. Um, box inserts are another good one, especially for like the board games like your, your rebellion or outer rim just because mm-hmm. usually the 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 box inserts that the gaming companies design for their games is either an afterthought or barely a thought at all yeah they never come yeah. with a good organizer especially the star wars ones the the one that came in this the deck building game is good and perfectly uh functional the Rebellion and Outer Rim, definitely the biggest candidates for box inserts. I got one from a company called Folded Space for Outer Rim, and it was affordable because it was made out of foam. Some of them will be made out of like um, maybe MDF board, MDF yeah. wood and stuff. Um, game mats are a good one, especially if you've got someone playing those miniatures games. Um, mats are always good you just need to figure out what size they might need yeah Yeah. like if they're playing shatter point you know they're only going to need a three by three if they're playing uh legion they might need three by three or they might need three by six depending on if they're playing full-size games or uh skirmish games or they might even need four by six if they're going to play like big like 1600 point grand army games (laughs) and so for those games that's like a a play surface that you put everything else on top of, uh, it basically like looks like the surface of the planet or whatever you're playing yeah. on or, or for like our, our mm. model, you can't like a space mat. Um, yeah. These are essentially big giant mouse pads that you lay down on the table. Yeah. I like the, cause I, I've had a, a, my space mat since forever for X-Wing, but I use it for other games too. It's really good for other, just other board games to have underneath. It's got a table topper. Thing. Yeah, yeah, if it's if it's a game like a like a card game or something with you know a weird board that's not that big, I used to use it for Outer Rim before I had the Outer Rim specific game mat. Yeah, and, and then, then the ones uh, like that that are for a board game are kind of nice because then it has like oh here's the places you put the cards and stuff like that, right? So those can be kind of nice. Mm-hmm. And last thing on our accessory list is. Um, just the terrain packs for Legion and Shatterpoint players, because a lot of them, a lot of the terrain is a little on the spendier side, and a lot of people aren't buying that themselves. So for Shatterpoint, there's, well, you know, I'll tell you, if you've got a Shatterpoint player and they don't have the um, You Cannot Run Diorama pack with Vader and Kenobi, look into getting that because. If they didn't buy it, it's because they thought it was too expensive. So you buy it, and they'll love you for it. Makes it it a good gift, yeah. I didn't buy it because I don't want it. (laughs) Okay, don't buy it for Leo. (laughs) I guess ask them why they didn't buy it. If they thought it was too expensive, buy it for them. If they were like, eh, then don't buy it. (laughs) Uh, And then Legion has some terrain packs, too. The Crashed X-Wing, Crashed ATST, Endor Shield Bunker. Those are things that most players pass by because they're a little bit more of a luxury than a necessity. Yeah. yeah. If I got yeah. it as a gift, I'd be like, oh, cool. I'll paint this up. But when it's on the shelf, I probably go like, eh, I don't need it enough to pay for it. Right. So right. yeah. yeah good it's gift like idea. you look at that and you're going to be like, I could buy a couple more units for that price. You know, right. um, but if somebody else bought it for me, then I'd be like, cool. Yeah. And the nice thing that with the Shatterpoint uh, terrain is, um, yeah, you know, it's meant for Shatterpoint. It can 100% be used with Legion, too. So whether you get a Shatterpoint player or a Legion player in your life, they'll work for either. And even if they already have the a terrain pack, having more of the same 
isn't necessarily a bad thing because you can kind of put the buildings mm -hmm. together a little bit differently you when just, you're assembling yeah. them. And then just, just having more is cool. You can stack up and make taller buildings and things like that. So, Yeah. yeah. Do some kit bashing and mix them up in weird ways. And but so those are all like the, stuff under the... Those are like first party ones. Um, but kind of like the tokens, there's also just like people that sell 3D printed ones that you can find on Etsy or whatever. So there's like a lot of options out there if you just want to find something cool looking. In Imperial Terrain. So That's a big one. They're a reputable company who I won't regret endorsing, but they seem to have really cool stuff. That'd probably be my first pick, especially for Shatterpoint Terrain, but they also have a lot of Legion Terrain. But yeah, I think another one everything... I would recommend quick is... Uh, I think it's just legiontrain.com. They're one that actually sells ones that can come pre-painted if you want. So if you're buying mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that you don't uh, want to make the pay person paint afterwards, you can spring for a little extra for something like that. It'd be kind of nice. Yeah, You know, what? this accessory section should have called games for real gamers. <laughs> because this is all the stuff that I want because I have everything else that we've mentioned on our list. I, this is what I want. I want the box inserts and the mats and the tokens. Yeah, for the gamer who has everything. Yeah. Well, actually, get me um, Star Wars The Queen's Gambit Episode 1 board game. That's what I want. <laughs> if you got like 700 bucks lying around. Yeah. Anyway, that's our 2023 holiday gift guide for Star Wars games. Anyway, that's our holiday gift guide. Let us know if we missed something obvious or what you want for Christmas, because, you know, maybe Santa Jodo will bring it to you. Hmm. 